What's good? It's your boy WK, aka the Black Harry Potter, and we're back with another one. First thing I want to say is y'all been showing crazy support on my older videos. I still been getting some things worked out with my recent move and everything. I just started a new job, so y'all been killing on my last videos. Though my Memphis video I've been doing numbers, my second Lonzo video I've been doing numbers, that first Lonzo video I may be doing numbers. So I appreciate that. I'm coming at y'all with more NBA content. So let's just get right into it. Let's get it. Pop it. Okay, so new topic today. I want to talk about the most significant injuries in the NBA. So two caveats. One, I'm not going back too far. So like things like T-Max injury and Penny Hardaway, like I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, like recently, over the past probably like 10 years, max. And I'm also not talking about, when I say most significant, I don't mean most gruesome. So like we're not talking about Gordon Hayward or anything like that. We're talking about things that had a lasting impact that really kind of changed the course of NBA history. And if you agree with me, drop a comment. If you got some more that I didn't think of or I didn't talk about, drop a comment. This is mostly just to start a discussion, but I'm talking about injuries that impacted the future of the NBA and had kind of led to like a chain of events, kind of, if you will. We get right into it, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Always comment, because I'm always gonna respond to y'all. Let's get into it. Okay, first and foremost, I want to say, this is not in any order, okay? This is just like a few important injuries. I can't really order these, because they all got different kind of impacts. Let's get right into it. So first, I want to talk about Isaiah Thomas. Now, if y'all remember a few years back, three years, I think, Isaiah Thomas was a monster. I mean, the dude was a 5'9 assassin. He was dropping 30 a game. He was killing it. And he led the Celtics actually into multiple playoff rounds. That man was doing his thing. Remember when they were calling him Mr. Fourth Quarter? That man was putting up, like, 12, 14, 18 points in the fourth quarter, and he's 5'9", he's doing his thing. He couldn't be stopped. And y'all remember the heart that he showed that year? So first, rest in peace to his sister because she died in the middle of the playoffs. You know that man didn't, I don't believe he missed a game. I'm, I'm pretty sure he came back and played right after her funeral. He didn't miss a game. Think of the heart this man showed. And then he got injured. 10 to 38, shooting 20. Six percent. Cleveland unable to hit from three. Isaiah hey, is limping. Something is wrong with him. His ankle or something or his hip. And he played through it. His hip was messed up. Going into a contract year. But you know why he wasn't worried about the contract year? Because he thought the Celtics were gonna take care of him. And that's why I say this is one of the most significant injuries in recent memory. Not necessarily just because of what happened to Isaiah Thomas, even though I feel for him and he deserved to get his money back then. And now he's bouncing around teams on veteran deals making two million a year when he was supposed to get a max contract. I mostly think because now the precedent has been set for players to understand that these teams don't really care about you. When you wear your emotions on your sleeve like Isaiah Thomas did, you played after your sister's death, through injury, just because you wanted to fight for your team and they trade you the first chance they get for a player that they knew was going to be a couple year rental, maybe, because Kyrie didn't even want to be there. That's disrespectful, and it set a really important precedent because now, what do people always say when, when they're talking about players leaving? Look what happened to Isaiah Thomas. These teams aren't loyal to you. He's now become the standard for players to sit back and remember. No matter how many times they come in your living room, no matter how many times they come interrupt your vacation during free agency, these teams do not care about you. And while I hate that it happened to Isaiah Thomas, I think it has it's opened players' eyes more, and now people are going to think about that. Because what you got to remember with these teams, dude, is they love you when you're up but the second you go down, they do not care. They will cast you aside, they will trade you. They traded him for Kyrie, and now look what's happened. Now, they might not have had that year, the regular seasons that they've had, who knows? Because Kyrie is better than Isaiah Thomas, for sure. He doesn't love Boston. They, don't, they say he don't even like living there. So you traded away your franchise cornerstone, who maybe could have gotten healthier and came back the same, if he hadn't been doing all this moving around and trying to come back too early so he could get his money, you traded that away for two years of a dude who created problems and has probably caused a lot of tension with your young core. That's why I say this Isaiah Thomas injury is just, it's important. It's important. It's a part of basketball history that should always be remembered when people think about free agency and stuff like that. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. Now, this one involves two players. And y'all work with me on this because this is going to involve a lot of projection and what ifs and what maybe would have happened, but still. In 20. 14, 2015, the joint injuries of Kyrie and Kevin Love. Now, I'm going to go through 
a projection of things that I think would be different if those two didn't get injured. Now remember that finals. LeBron took a team with Matthew Della Vadova as the second best player. He took them six games with the Warriors. So it has been kind of a consensus that if Kyrie and Kevin Love had been there, they would have won that first series, right? Boom. Now, think about this. The Warriors lose that year. Let's say they still have a fantastic regular season, right? They're hungry. They're coming back. They're ready for fire. They're ready, they're ready to prove everybody wrong about them. But then remember they ran into OKC in the Western Conference Finals. Now, they did come back and beat them down 3-1. But do you think a Warriors team coming off of a defeat in the finals would have had the kind of championship DNA it would take to come back from down 3-1 against Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant? I personally don't. I think that if they had lost that first year, they still wouldn't have the winning DNA they needed to come back in that. Because if y'all remember, everyone that they played against, the point guards were hurt. I'm pretty sure they played the Grizzlies. Mike Conley was hurt. They played... Was it the Pelicans and Drew Holiday was hurt? I forget who was playing for the Pelicans, but regardless, everyone they played against the point guard was hurt. The person who would have been going up against Steph. So they had an easy route to get there. And then the Cavs were hurt. So when you think about this, they never would have really gotten the DNA that they needed to win a series like that. So I honestly think, now we're moving away from the Warriors, I think OKC wins that series. If, if the Warriors don't have the championship mindset, if they win that series, I think Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook go on to win the NBA Finals that year. I think they were the most talented team in the NBA at that point, especially just in the playoffs. They were proven that they were the best. They just choked. The t- KD, that's my guy, though. They choked. Okay, let's keep it going, though. If they win that Finals, KD doesn't leave. He's a Finals MVP now. He doesn't leave. They go on. Maybe they win another one. But you think about this also. Check this out. What if KD went in multiple finals MVPs that never leads to Russell Westbrook becoming an MVP? And remember, Russell Westbrook's tied down to OKC because he's their guy. But if he had been second fiddle to KD, would he have been the guy? Maybe Russell Westbrook leaves in free agency. So now we got to think about what the NBA looks like with Russell Westbrook on a different team. I don't know. And KD never goes to the Warriors. So do the Warriors ever become this dynasty? If Kevin Love and Kyrie don't get hurt. You gotta think about all these chain reaction events that would have happened, and I don't think they ever become what they are today. I really don't. That first championship is what allowed them to get what they needed, because this is one thing I've always said in defense of Kevin Durant. People always say, oh, KD joined a championship team already. You could argue that without Kevin Durant, they would have zero if Kevin Love and Kyrie didn't get hurt, because they might have repeated. Cleveland might have won two in a row. We got to think about that stuff, man. I'm just telling y'all that was a significant injury because it is what that injury is what led to the creation of the Warriors dynasty. That, that, that is it. They might've won, but from the sample size that we have and how they were playing, it's very possible that Kyrie, Kevin Love and LeBron would have beat them easily. And if that happens, maybe we never see this golden state, golden state dynasty. Just saying. So think about, let's get to the next one. Okay. Third is one we all know about. It's one that broke all of our hearts back in like 2012, 2011 maybe. The first injury to Derrick Rose. And this didn't necessarily call a chain, cause a chain reaction of events. I guess some things would be different if he never got hurt. But that's the point. If he had never gotten hurt. I believe Derrick Rose's Achilles tear and the meniscus and all other shit he tore. It robbed us of possibly an all-time great. Because I don't think you can argue that Derrick Rose is an all-time great now. But think about the the career path he was on at that point. He was the youngest MVP of all time. He was leading the Chicago Bulls team. They were making the playoffs. He was the most athletic point guard we had ever seen. Westbrook and Donovan Mitchell now kind of are. But they were not Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose getting hurt. When you think about where the NBA would be right now, we don't know how good Derrick Rose would have gotten. It's a possibility that Derrick Rose would be a top five player in the world right now. Top three, maybe the best. Derrick Rose was killing it, and his jumper has gotten better now, right? So imagine, you can argue that he's gotten a better jumper because he had to, because he doesn't have the same first step, whatever. But imagine if Derrick Rose had gotten that jumper, and he still had his old legs. Dog, we might be talking about Derrick Rose as a top five player in the world, probably maybe one of the best of all time. And maybe it wouldn't be best point guards are Curry, Kyrie, and then Westbrook. Maybe Derrick Rose would be undebatably number one. Because you gotta remember, he was 6'5", he was faster than everybody else, more athletic, and he was shifty. And he could finish around the rim like nobody else. They called him a contortionist, because he just 
Yeah. I'm just saying, dog. Think about it. Derrick Rose's injury, in my opinion, is one of the most important in NBA history just because it allowed us not to be able to see what he actually could have been. And there are people like that. I mean, there's Penny's injury and t Rex injury, like I said. I still feel like we got more out of them than, than what we got from Derrick Rose before he got hurt. So I, I think we kind of knew, we kind of can see where their careers might have ended up if they had they gotten hurt. But with Derrick Rose, the possibilities were absolutely endless. You feel bad for the man. But it also kind of, for me, I mean, this is one, I mean, I don't, I'm kind of young also, so I don't remember like other things back then. But for me, it also kind of pointed to, you know, the vulnerability of some of these players. I mean, we look at these players like superheroes and we don't think about like one wrong cut and we can lose these players, you know, what they were for good. I mean, even me right now, you know, like KD's had some injuries, but I see the man go down with his Achilles tear and I'm like, oh, is this dude ever going to be the same? And you got, you know, you really got to think about this. Like these players are vulnerable and they're human. Sometimes it seems like they're not. I mean, think about when LeBron got hurt. That was the first time he had ever gotten hurt. Derrick Rose's injury for me kind of opened my eyes up more to like, yo, these players are vulnerable and at any time, at any day, their careers could change forever. And when you think about that, with some players that can adjust, like I think Derrick Rose has had a pretty good career, but like, imagine, and God forbid this, but imagine one day if Zion had an injury, like that was bad, that took away his athleticism. What would, what would happen after that? Or like Russell Westbrook, or we just, we really don't know. So I think Derrick Rose's injury is pretty significant because it left a hole in the NBA and it left us all saying, what if? All right, last one now. This is the most recent big time injuries that's happened in the NBA. I'm talking about Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson. So first, think about the Warriors position. The Warriors, before this happened, were gonna offer KD and Klay two max spots, right? And they gotta offer it to them now just because, look, think about how to make a look if they don't. Now, what if those two never come back the same? Obviously, two of my favorite players in the NBA. Not something I want to happen. But imagine if they don't, though. Now the Warriors are locked up for five years on these dudes. They in a Chris Paul type of deal. Imagine if KD and Klay Thompson aren't as good when they come back. And obviously, I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm just saying, what if? So now they got to gamble on those dudes coming back the same. And if not, the Warriors are basically fucked. So that's tough. Then think about the other thing that's happening in the NBA. KD was supposed to go to the Knicks. He's not going to the Knicks now. So now the Knicks gotta rely on RJ Barrett and their young talent and possibly go through just a pure rebuild now because it, it sounds like Kyrie is done with the Knicks. But maybe not because the Nets sound like they don't want him anymore. They don't want him anymore. So maybe now the Nets just keep D'Angelo Russell and let Kyrie go do his thing because D'Angelo Russell's younger. He's kind of trending in the direction of being a Kyrie type of player, you know, point guard, shifty, can shoot, can pass. I mean, Maybe keep him. He doesn't bring any locker room problems except snitches. So maybe I keep him. Maybe Kyrie goes to the Knicks now. But do y'all think Kyrie and RJ Barrett will play well together? I don't think so. So that's a problem. And now it's left the biggest hole in the NBA in recent memory in terms of who's going to win next year. Because we really don't know now because of these two injuries. Because next year, we all would have predicted Golden State to win next year. Because if they were healthy. Because remember, this year, they only lost because they weren't healthy. So we would have predicted them to win. But now, we don't know what's going to happen next year. Even though I have a strong prediction about who I think, and I promise you it's not who everybody else is saying is going to win in the NBA, and I'm dropping that video later this week. But this injury, nothing is. I'm glad about it, but it's not created the most parity and fairness that we've had in the NBA in a long time. And it's also, it's affecting what everybody else is doing. And it's now creating, creating this air that this is one of the biggest free agent summers in a long time. And I want to see what's going to happen. You know, like, I'm, I'm ready. Like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I'm not too excited. I'm too excited. But anyways, man, those are just a few of them. I might make a part two to this because those are just a few of them, the ones that just popped into my head. Let me know if you can think of some others you want to see me cover. Let me know if there's anybody you disagree with, any ones that I maybe forgot, maybe that I don't even know about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't go back that far, so maybe you go back to some other people that's far back in the past. I don't know, anything, whatever. But I am going to drop my prediction on who the 2020 NBA champions are going to be. Stay tuned for that. Appreciate y'all's support. Like, comment, subscribe. Brr,